In this episode, we're going to take a thrift store picture and we're going to turn it into a beautiful French picture. Next, we'll take this ratty old headboard and turn it into a gorgeous shelf display. And lastly, we'll take an old flower sack that I got from the flea market and turn it into this awesome vintage looking bag. So if you're ready to dive in this week's project, then let's do this. Just a quick note before we get started though, if you're new to my channel, I just want to welcome you. My name's Kelly Sherry. My mom and I do a lot of vintage markets. I show you how to take thrifted items and turn it into beautiful home decor. I post a new video every week, so if you subscribe to my channel and ring the bell, you'll get notified every time I post a new video. So I bought this picture at the thrift store for $2.99. It has all these Canadian leaves on it and it is a very strange color. However, I love the shape of this, so I want to change it. So I took it outside and I sprayed it with flat white protective enamel by Rust-Oleum. And yes, that is ice on my 26 year old deck. It's very cold over here in Michigan and I spray them outside and then I bring them in by the heat. Hey, a girl's gotta do what a girl's gotta do, right? Okay, so our pitcher is completely white and dry and I'm gonna use one of our French decals that I have. I think that's gonna look really pretty on it. So I'm just gonna cut around the image. You wanna get like about a quarter inch to like an eighth of an inch around. Sometimes if you take the protective coating off first, it's a little easier to cut. All right, so I have this all trimmed. So I'm just gonna take that protective coating off here. And then we're gonna take the backing off this. Sorry, I have paint on my hands from doing a project. Now these are very delicate, so you wanna be careful with them. And we're just gonna place that on our pitcher. I wanna make sure it's lined up perfectly. I think that looks pretty right there. And then what you do is you just kinda of smooth it out with your fingers. Doesn't that look pretty? So then you can add flowers into your pitcher. And I mean, it's just like 100% better than what it was. So I added a little touch of lavender in there and I think this looks absolutely beautiful. Now, if you didn't want to get the decal, you could always use like a stamp and stamp some French wording on there. Either way, this is a fast, easy, simple project, which looks very nice. So my mom brings over this headboard and it is just like filthy. I don't know where she got it from. Maybe the trash, but she's like, I thought you could make a bench with this. We're going to make something even better, but we need to clean this up. So I'm using some Clorox wipes, but it probably needs some crud cutter because it's pretty gross. Okay, so I bought this wood at Home Depot so that we could make a shelf with this one here. And then this one here would just go across and we could put hooks on it. So what we're gonna need to do is cut these boards to size and then nail them on. Now this board that I bought is not the best board. I mean, it had the least knots, but look at this on the back. So I'm gonna cut this off and then we'll start to measure from there. Okay, so now that I cut that end off here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line this up to the edge and we're gonna measure where we need to cut on this here. So, like right there. And then we're gonna cut that. We're gonna cut that. 
Okay, so I have this all lined up here, and we're just going to cut it. We need to flip it over because it's a little too big of a board, and my blade doesn't go all the way through. So, let's continue on the other side. So now that we have our board cut, let's make sure it fits. Oh, that is perfect. Hmm. Absolutely perfect. Now we need to cut the smaller board for our shelf. And we're going to cut it the exact same length as this one here. So we're going to measure that out. And we'll cut that as well. So we're just going to cut our shelf here. Line that up. And then we're going to cut right on the line. Okay. Hopefully that's a perfect cut too. Let's check it out. Now it's time to nail these together. So first things first, we are going to attach our shelf to our board here. So we're gonna put a little bead of Type Bond. I love this glue, this is great glue if you're gonna do wood stuff. So we'll just put that all along the backboard here. We have our glue on here, and we're just going to put our top board right on top here. We'll line that up perfectly to the edge, and then we're going to put one nail in it. Maybe two. <laughs> and then we'll just nail that all the way down. Okay, so now our shelf is put together really good. We have that glue on there and it's nailed really tight. So we're just going to put this board across here. I'm going to have it come down a little. Because again, remember I wasn't sure about the legs. You guys, I'm having a dilemma here though. I don't know what to do about the legs. I think the legs are just too long on this. So... I don't know if I should cut them off. I was thinking about maybe just cutting this off right here and adding that up here. All right, well, we'll have to see. But I think if we move this board down a little, it'll look a little more balanced and we can keep the integrity of the bed. And I think that looks pretty good. Let's nail that in place. We actually should probably put a little wood glue on that as well. So I'm just gonna try to lift that up a little. No, that one's down, but we'll put it on this side. I can turn this and put it right here. And we'll put a couple in this side too. I want to fill in the little um, space right there where the slat would go in for the rail. 
I'm just gonna use a little of this paper clay that I have. I think that'll do the trick. I'm just gonna use a little of this paper clay. We'll fill that in. I usually use like a wood dough putty, but I don't have any and it's too late to go to the store and I really want to finish this project. So we're gonna use a little of this paper clay. I think that looks pretty good. We'll let that dry. So we're just taking a little of this paper clay and we're just kind of smooshing that in. You want to shape it like the, the leg. You don't want to distort the, the shape of it at all. All right, so I think that's filled in pretty darn good. We'll let that dry. The other day I was out and I found all this Wise Owl paint on clearance. I can't believe it. I love Wise Owl. However, it's one of the more expensive chalk paints, but this was all on sale. So I picked up a whole bunch. So I'm pulling up to Motor City Paint. They have Wise Owl paint here and we're going to get some. So when I got there, the guy at Motor City Paint told me that they were clearancing it out because they don't sell it a lot. I personally don't think that anyone knows that they carry it. So he said everything was $10. Usually this paint goes from anywhere from $26 to $32. So I bought a ton of it. The reason I love this paint is because it's so chalky and their colors are so rich. But again, it's expensive. This is where I discovered black wax. I love this black wax. I actually need to get another one because I've had this forever, but we're going to use this on the... So you just want to get a little of that black wax onto a brush. And then you really want to get into all the nooks and crannies here. So I'm going to really rub in there just to get all that in there. And as you can see, it just really gives it a beautiful effect. So like I said, I ended up buying a lot of stuff, but I'm so glad I did. And today we're gonna use the gray linen. Anyway, we are gonna paint this gray linen. I did a buffet in this and it was absolutely beautiful. Here's a little peek at it. It really was a stunning piece and it sold really quick. So we're going to paint this in uh, gray linen. So I think this looks really, really good. We're just gonna let that dry. Once it's dry, I'm gonna flip it over and do the back, but I think we're off to a good start. Okay, so this is dry on this side. We're gonna flip it over, and we're gonna paint the back of this because God knows that it needs it. So we're just gonna use that um, gray linen paint again. And this should get whatever we missed 
as well on the front, you know, especially these spokes or spindles, I should say. All right, so we're gonna use a little of this Wise Owl Black Wax. Just wanna take your brush, get some wax on there, and just go over the wood. So I just want to show you what that black wax does. And then what you do is you just take like a cloth and rub it in. And you're kind of rubbing some off too. Now if you get too much, you could always use a clear wax and that will take off the darkness. Okay, so while I was there, I picked up this furniture salve. It says that it's an alternative to wax and it protects furniture and it acts like a furniture polish. So we're gonna put that on there and um, see what that does. So I'm just rubbing this on to the spindles and can I tell you that this lavender smell is so fresh. It is just so clean. Oh my gosh, I love it. And you know what? It's actually easier to use than wax. I think those legs came out pretty darn good. Remember how we patched them? I'm just gonna take a piece of sandpaper though and just kinda go over just a little spots here. I just wanna kinda give it a little worn type look with the sandpaper. All right, so I bought these at Home Depot. These are hooks so we can hang this on the wall. I'm gonna put them on each side. So we'll put one over here. And then that way, we can hang it easily. Just kind of putting that right in the middle there. Alright, so now it has something it can hang from. So earlier that day I went to Hobby Lobby to kind of check out their hooks because I knew that I wanted to put hooks on this. 
Hobby Lobby has some really cool hardware. It really was a toss up between these hooks. I wasn't sure which one to get, but I thought the black would probably go better with our project, but I loved the white hooks. So we bought the hardware from Hobby Lobby. I have spaced these eight inches apart and we are gonna screw them in. Now, before I put those screws in, I'm gonna drill a little hole with my drill in each of those to make it easy for us to get those in. All right, so let's go ahead and screw these in. We've already drilled our hole, so that should make it a little easier. Just gonna start these here. It's really hard to get in here. I may have to do this manually. So that's what I ended up doing because it was just too tight of a spot to use that cordless drill. Well, you guys, I really think this was an amazing transformation. I can't even believe it's the same dirty, dingy headboard, and it has turned into a complete swan. It's gorgeous, and I think I may even keep it. Which brings us to our third project, a vintage looking bag. When I was in Springfield, I found these grain sacks or flour sacks, whatever you want to call them, but I love them. They were only $5. You know, if you remember, when I was in Springfield, I picked up this old flower sack. I think it's, I think that's what it's called. And it has these grain stripes. I love this. We are gonna make something really cool out of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, see it even has some weird looking stamp on it. But anyway, we are gonna cut some of this out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make like a bag. So I'm going to cut out a square and I want to make sure that I have this grain stripe there. So I'm going to cut about this much here and I think I want to go down to almost where the writing is. So we're just basically making a square. All right, so we have a square here and we're gonna make a bag. So I need to get my sewing machine and we are gonna just sew across here and there. And then we're gonna add some wire so that it can kind of hang. And I also wanna stamp like a date on it because I think that would look really awesome too. Okay, so I have some wire here and what we're gonna do, I want to, I want to be able to make this wire here go inside the top part of the, um, of the bag. So I actually want to stitch this down so that this bag the opening will be like you can bend it it'll have wire in it so I'm gonna cut a piece of wire here make sure we have a long enough piece okay, I think that's gonna be good And as we're sewing this down, 
we're gonna put that wire in there. Okay, so we're tucking wire in right here along the along the edge, and we're gonna sew that wire in so that our bag will be bendable. So I'm just gonna start by putting the needle in. Get that wire back in there, okay. And we'll go a few steps, lock it in, and we're gonna sew all the way down. You wanna guide your wire into the back there so you're not sewing over it. I sew a little bit and then I stop just to make sure that I'm not running over this wire. We're just gonna continue to keep going down. And again, we're doing this so that the um, top part of our bag will be bendable. So if we wanna make it like a wide mouth bag, it will be. You can form it in that shape. in place. So now our wire is in there and it is totally bendable. It's sort of like a mail bag. That's what, what we're making. That's what we're going for. So now we need to sew up the bag. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're gonna fold right sides touching, meaning you want the side that the bag's gonna actually be flipped to, like the right side. You're gonna put the right sides touching. That means this is the inside of the bag. All right, and we're just gonna sew here and here. I'm gonna put this underneath. I am not gonna sew the wire, of course. I'm just gonna sew just below it. You wanna position that where you have it lined up, but yet you're not gonna go over the wire, because that would be bad. All right, so let's go ahead and do that now. Turn it. And we're going to lock it in place. All right. So now, as you can see, we sewed all the way around. Now we're going to turn our bag inside out, but first you want to clip the corners. It just makes the bag easy to turn and the corners will look better. So we're gonna turn the bag inside out. See, it's like a mail bag almost. And what I like is that we put the wire in it so now it can hang open like a wide mouth kind of bag. And I again, I told you I wanted to put some numbers on it so we're gonna do that next. 
Now, in order to put those numbers on, we are gonna use these IOD stamps. I'm gonna get out a few numbers and then we'll stamp it on our bag. So, I'm gonna do, we want it to be like an old bag, which it is, but we want it to really seem vintage. So, we're gonna do the one. I wanna do like 19, let's see, do 19, 1914 sounds, oh no, I can't do that. I mean, I could, but I think it would just be easier if I had Right, what to do, what to do. Should I do 1924? No, I don't want it. Uh, 19. You know what, I'm just gonna go back in and do that letter, or do that number. I'm just gonna go back and do the number. All right, so we're gonna line this up here. I have one of those IOD kind of mats. Yes, I did cut it. I like to cut them because it's just easier to work with. So let's see, I'm gonna put these on here. All right, so we're gonna line them up. Put the one, the nine. Now, again, I'm gonna use this one again right here. So we'll have it spaced correctly. I'm gonna go like this. And then we'll put the four. So I want it to say 1914. So I'm gonna go back and put the one here. Yep, I think that's gonna look really cool. All right, now whenever you have newer stamps, you wanna condition them by using a little sandpaper. So I'm just taking a little piece of sandpaper and just going over the stamp a little. All right, I think that's good. So now I'm gonna take some of this black paint. It's just folk art matte paint. We'll squirt a little on here and then I'm gonna actually just like paint it on the tin foil. I've been doing that and it works out so good. You don't have too much paint. I know some people like to use ink. I, use, I like to use paint. Okay, so this is all painted up. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick my numbers in there. the four and if it doesn't um, print all the ink that's even better all right so here we go let's press this down onto our bag I'm just gonna move my fingers over the numbers so that they will stamp. You don't wanna shift them at all. Just move your fingers over the stamp. I'm gonna put that four down. I wanna be careful because I did get a little paint on this plastic here. I don't wanna splotch it on my bag. All right. I think it's, this is the moment of truth. Let's pick it up and see what we have. Oh, that looks really cool. It did not print completely, which is perfect because, 
you know it just looks old and vintage that way so I'm gonna ink this one back up and then we're gonna go over and put the one back here So I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to go over this. And I think this is the moment of truth. Perfect. 1914. It's exactly what we wanted. So now our bag has some real character. We're going to let that dry on there. I'm gonna clean up these stamps and then we'll work on the bag just a little bit more. Okay, so we have our bag done. These are all dry. Now I have this jute here. It's like a rope. I got it from Hobby Lobby. You wanna get it when it's 50% off because it is quite expensive. It's $19. So anyway, I do a lot of projects so it's probably good to have, but you wanna buy it when it's 50% off. So, we're just gonna pull some of this rope out and we're gonna cut enough so that we can use it as a handle for our bag, like a strap. And then we're also gonna tie it just like this. We're gonna cut a little hole, pull it through and knot it on each end. So make sure you cut enough rope that you can do that. I think that's good. I'm gonna just cut this. And now what you wanna do is on the side of your bag, like right here, we're just gonna cut a little hole that we can put the jute through. If you want to get fancy, I think they're called grommets. You can put one of those in, but I'm not going to go to that extent for this. So make your hole big enough that you can actually get this through. Let's see, hopefully I did. Okay. And we're going to tie a knot. Okay, we have our knot that's gonna hold that right there. We're gonna loop that around, make another hole right here. And we're gonna put that through. You know, I need to cut this one because it's a little frayed. It'll just be easier that way. Okay, so we're gonna push that through our hole. I think I might have to make this a little bigger here. Yep. So you wanna push your, your jute through there, your rope. And then you're just gonna pull through I'm missing one here. I am missing one. Hold on. Okay, let's try this again. Push this through the hole. I think this is enough right here. That should be good. Untwist this. And I'm gonna tie that in a knot. And we're just gonna cut that off. Now we have this wonderful bag. 
that has like a wide mouth to it. You know, and I didn't tell you this, but with our extra wire, just tie it around your, you just tie that around the rope here and then just snip off the excess. There we go. But this is a wonderful bag and we are gonna stuff it full of Sweet Annie. Now, if you've been watching me a while, then you know that we get Sweet Annie from Springfield. My mom and I go there every year and we buy it. So this is a great filler for anything that you really wanna do. Okay, I have that beautiful Sweet Annie that we got from Springfield and we're gonna place that in our bag and it's gonna be beautiful. So I'm just gonna break off a few pieces here. And we're gonna put that in there. I think we need to make this a little shorter. I think that actually that is good. We don't really need to put any more than that in there. So look how cute our bag is with the sweet Annie and the rope and our numbers stamped on there. This is pretty easy and it's so cute. This bag has so much charm and character. I love this bag. And just a quick note before you go, Flea Market Rescue has a Facebook page. Yep, I started one a couple weeks ago so that we could share our projects, tips, and ideas. So if you want to hop on over there, we'd love to have you. That's it for this episode of Flea Market Rescue. If you like this episode and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.